Hey guys, in this video, we're going to go over how to get your bubble tip anemones to have those nice bulbous bubble tip ends instead of uh, long stringy ends. We're going to talk about how we get these guys to have the nice bubble tipped ends on them. Uh, disclaimer up front, I, I've done a ton of research and I'm sure you guys have looked at a bunch of stuff as well. There's no real evidence to support why anemones do or do not bubble in hobbyist tanks. Um, no one has said to have a definitive answer as to why, but there's a lot of theories out there. Um, a lot of online real retailers make suggestions as to why and things that you can do to get them to bubble up. Um, a lot of hobbyists have theories and suggestions as to why, and we're going to look at those. Uh, I do not claim to have the exact answer either. What I am going to do is I'm going to talk to you about those theories and how those theories are in my tank and what my tank conditions are. Because I've been able to take anemones from other hobbyist tanks that are long and stringy and uh, not bubbling at all. And then I put them in my tank. And overnight, you can see the ends start to bubble up. And I'm going to show you evidence of that uh, anemones that I've bought in, in this tank that you're seeing now that were stringy, uh, non-bubbled ends. I put them in my tank. And under my conditions, I'm able to get them to bubble up. So I'm going to show you those direct uh, changes in those anemones. And then we're going to kind of talk through what are the conditions in my tank that affect the anemone's uh, shape and that bulbous end. So several things to go through here. Um, so let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at here is those ones that I talked about where I, I've purchased stringy anemones and they've bubbled up in my tank. So the first one here is this rainbow bubble tip anemone. Uh, when I got it, it was very stringy. Um, sorry, I don't have the original picture of when I bought it. The other ones I do, but when I bought this one, it was very stringy. And here you can see it bubbled up in my tank. The next one is this uh, sunburst anemone here. You can see uh, just being in my tank for a couple days, it's already starting to get that bubble going. But you can see multiple, multiple of the uh, tentacles are still stringy. Um, and then the green one, you can see kind of coming in next to it when I first put it in. And then here's the green one. Um, a couple days, obviously you can see where it was. It moved over up next to this anemone. And you can see it's been a few days and that uh, sunburst is bubbling up much more there. The green one uh, is starting to bubble up as well. So both of them uh, really kind of uh, changing over. And then here they are um, present day. So you can see full bubble tipped ends on both of them. Um, they've really made a huge transformation and uh, look very different from when they were put into the tank. You can see those nice bulbous uh, round bubbled ends and no stringy ends at all. This one here is a Sherman anemone that I got. Here's the picture of when I first got it and what it looked like when I put it into my tank. And then here's a picture of it now, current day. You can see the ends are starting to bubble. Um, this has been in my tank uh, about two weeks now, so it's not brand new into the tank. It's been in there about two weeks, but you can see that the ends are changing. The ends are getting uh, bubbly and it's definitely making a lot of progress. Looking at kind of the main things that people suggest here, especially uh, you know when you're doing some research, lighting intensity, hungry, flow, dosing and then a lot of other when you read a little deeper into hobbyist stuff uh, they talk about spectrum and hosting and water temperature and water quality so let's look at some of that stuff so light intensity in this tank the par is running 175 to 200 at the top and you know 125 ish at the sand bed and of course i'm running the salty pops ai prime 16 prime hd uh, light uh, which gives that par. So I would say when overall, when it comes to this, I do think that intensity plays a part. Um, and I think high intensity aids uh, in 
creating those bubble tip ends. I do not believe it is the end all be all. And I do not believe that uh, low intensity automatically means stringy ends. I just think that high intensity um, will help create some of those bubble tip ends. Um, so if you're looking at my tank, uh, you know, the 175 to 200, I would consider that moderate lighting. You know, we're definitely not in that 250 to 300, um, but, you know, really kind of depends on different people's perspective on what high lighting and moderate lighting is. I would consider this tank moderate lighting um, and it's still bubbling up. Again, I've seen anemones under um, metal halides and not bubble. And then I have this guy here, which is in my son's tank, bubbling up, and all it has is two LED ENET, three watt bulbs, three watt uh, strips each. And for two LED ENET strips, very low amount of uh, intensity, and it's bubbling up. When it comes to light spectrum, I do believe there is some relevance here, and I do think spectrum plays a part in bubbling up. Um, obviously, I, I run my Salty Pops program, and of course, a, a properly balanced spectrum is key for the health of all inhabitants of the tank. And for my spectrum, I do have uh, the morning blue period, a daylight period, which uh, brings in 60% uh, white on that um, AI prime, and then I have an evening blue period to kind of mimic the sun and get that balanced spectrum. Again, this is the anemone in my son's tank. It sits oddly right underneath a white LED ENET strip. It barely ever gets blue and it's bubbling up. All these other anemones here that you're seeing in these pictures get that Salty Pops light spectrum and they get morning blue they get a strong white period throughout the day, and then they get an evening blue. So I do think, although, uh, you know, you can have a great healthy tank with zero white and just run blue and have a great healthy tank, I do think running the white does play a part in the overall health and bubbling of the anemone tips. What you're seeing here is the rainbow bubble tip anemone under the blue period. And then here we go, have it under the white period. Then we have uh, these guys under blue. And we're gonna see a couple of them under blue and under white. So you can just see what the different appearance is. So here they are under white. Um, around the So you can see what their different appearance is under the different light spectrums. But again, I do think they get benefit from the variety of spectrums versus just one consistent spectrum of blue only. And again, here's another direct comparison of this guy. And then here under the white. And then we have the Sherman and enemy here for the last one. Again, under blue conditions. And then under the white conditions. So definitely a drastic difference between them both. All right, so let's talk about feeding these guys. Um, a lot of people theorize that feeding will help uh, create those bulbous ends. This is what I feed, a little bit of mice, PE mysis. Um, and I'll note, I don't feed often. I feed just kind of when I remember, any, anywhere between every two to six weeks. This feeding here, it's probably been five weeks since the last time I feed or fed. And I just basically melt it on the top and whatever falls on them falls on them. I don't really feed these guys much. Uh, these guys have been in the tank over a year, some of them. They're bulbous, they're great, and this is the only food source they get. Just a little bit of scraps that kind of fall on them. Outside of that, there's no direct feeding for any of my bubble tip and enemies. Um, they just kind of get that little bit that falls. As for daily feeding of this tank for the fish, they only get pellet, so there really is no indirect feeding that the anemones get on an ongoing basis. All right, so let's talk about flow here. A lot of retailers and hobbyists would suggest uh, moderate to strong flow. I do not have 
uh, moderate to strong flow. I actually have very low flow in this tank. Um, as you can see, that is the max flow right there. This is the Fluval Flex 15 gallon tank. The only circulation I have is the uh, return pump that came with it that goes in the back of the um, all-in-one unit. Very, very low flow. You can see right here, this is going through the glass, flow's running. You can see the top of the water shimmering there to show that flow's running. The anemones aren't even moving. This is a very low flow tank. Just again, the standard pump that came with this tank. No added power heads, no added wave makers, nothing. So again, very low flow and they are bubbling up uh, great. So I don't think flow is a huge contributor. Um, obviously flow is great for your tank. You need flow in your tank. Um, but these guys are healthy, happy, and bubbling up in a low flow condition. All right, so let's look at clownfish hosting. When it comes to clownfish hosting, you know, I'll, I'll note that I've seen in other hobbyist tanks anemones that are stringy end being hosted by clownfish. And those hobbyists have had the anemones for a long time. The anemones have hosted, been hosted by clownfish for a long time and still don't bubble up. Uh, so I'm not 100% convinced of this, that hosting will, will produce bubbles. However, I will say that all my bubble tip anemones are always hosted by clownfish. Um, so in my tank, I, I see the hosting um, as a great health source for the anemone. Um, I wouldn't say it creates the bubble tips. Uh, but there is some, you know, thought around it does aid in that. Because when the clownfish are hosting it, there's that symbiotic relationship where the anemone gets nutrition and um, from the clownfish, from waste and things like that, that they'll consume. So there is a benefit to the anemone having the clownfish host it. And again, a healthier anemone uh, is highly, more highly likely to have bubble tip ends. All right, so tank temperature. Um, a lot of people are going to think I am a little crazy here. You can see where I run my tanks. I run my tanks standard 79 to 80 degrees. You can see this one is over 80 degrees, closer to 81. This is why I run all my reef tanks. Um, so... Seeing I run all my reef tanks here, all my bubble tip and enemies bubble. I'm not saying there's a 100% correlation here, but it is a condition in my tank. Um, I do run my tanks warmer like this, and my enemies do bubble. So water quality. Of course, water quality is important for all aquarium inhabitants. Um, this one's an all-in-one aquarium, uh, AIO, and then... Uh, my other tanks, I tend to run canister filter. I don't run any refugiums or sump just because I don't like the noise they make. So um, I do, do also do regular water changes every other week at 10%. And I change my filtration and clean it and update it every four weeks. Um, I will put a side note that sumps and refugiums are the gold standard in the hobby. Um, you know, people tout them as the best. Uh, I just don't use them because I don't like the noise they make. Uh, so either way, what, regardless of what your filtration is, ensuring that you keep it clean and updated is going to be my best suggestion. Great water quality does produce great vibrance in all tank inhabitants, not just in enemies. All right, and lastly, let's talk about dosing here. In addition to what my salt provides, I dose Kent's Coral Vite one time per week in this 15 gallon tank and I dose half a teaspoon one time per week. I also add in live phytoplankton twice a week, 20 milliliters each time. And then of course the nutrients that the tank gets from my salt. This is the salt I use and the parameters uh, that that salt provides. 
Uh, hopefully this video helped. Hopefully you got some information that's going to help you get your anemones to bubble up. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Check out some more of my content. And I'll get more out soon. Thanks, guys.